Hello, this is uh, the lesson for Monday. And for today, the students are going to learn about plot. So this is what everybody learned about. Uh, for today's challenge, uh, the students um, look at this image and they make an inference based on what they see and what they already know um, to make an inference. So making an inference uh, means to uh, draw an educated conclusion based off of what they see plus what they already know. So in a, on a separate sheet of paper, title it today's challenge, making inferences, and uh, you can pause this video at any time. Uh, look at the picture. What are some things that you see? What kind of people do you see on there? Um, and what do you think is happening in this picture? So if I were to zoom out this picture, what do you think would be like the missing pieces of the picture? What do you think is happening here? Okay, so typically you should have about 10 minutes to write down your answer. Uh, a sentence stem to help you get started on this answer would be, based on what I see and what I already know, I can infer that and then finish the sentence. Okay, so for today's agenda, this is what our lesson is going to look like. Uh, the first thing that we do is today's challenge that typically takes about 10 minutes. Uh, then Reader's Workshop. Uh, for today, we are going to reread the story Grounded on page 6. Uh, I will provide a PDF version attached to the email that I sent to you. Um, and we're also going to learn about plot. Uh, then we're going to go into Writer's Workshop and we're going to learn about capitalization rules and I'm going to be introducing you to the eight parts of speech. For your exit ticket, you will just answer the essential questions for the Reader's Workshop and the Writer's Workshop on a separate sheet of paper. So let's get started. Reader's Workshop. Let's learn about plot. Uh, essential question. How do plot elements help us better analyze and understand a story. So if you can answer this question by the end of today's lesson, then you have learned how plot elements help us better analyze and understand a story. So the first thing that you need to do is you're going to watch this video um, and then we'll discuss uh, plot elements. Thank you. 
Get out of the car, please. Get out of the car. Get out of my car. So let's go on to our next slide. In this uh, portion, uh, you will need to have your journal, or if you don't have your journal because it should be in class, I want you to take out a, a separate sheet of paper, or if you have another notebook at your house, you may use that. Um, but you're going to be taking notes on plot right now, okay? Uh, remember, you can always pause this video at any time, so I'm just going to try to go as fast as I can so that the video is not, not so long, okay? So what is plot? Uh, on, your, on your sheet of paper, I want you to title your notes, plot. And then you're going to write down this definition. Plot is the sequence of events that happen in a literary work. So plot is a sequence of events of a story. Okay, the plot in, in a story is best uh, organ. Uh, sorry, the, the plot in a story is best explained by using a graphic organizer uh, called the plot diagram. Um, a plot diagram focuses on the key points or the most important parts of a story that happen in order or in sequential order. Okay. And when we say sequential order, we're talking about beginning, middle, and end, BME. In the next slide, you'll see an example of a plot diagram. Right now, I want you to write down uh, your, uh, your other vocabulary word, which is plot diagram. And I want you to write down the definition for it, which is a plot diagram is a graphic organizer used to explain plot. Once you finish writing down the definition, I want you to draw the picture that is right here. This is what a plot diagram looks like. So you will draw a pretty much kind of like a long line at the bottom. And then you're going to go up kind of like going into onto a mountain and then bring it back down the other edge of the mountain, and then another line. Then you're going to label each section. So this section over here, the beginning of the plot diagram is called our X position. This slanting line that goes up is called a rising action. The very peak of this mountain is called the climax. The line that's going down is called the falling action. And then this other line at the very end is called our resolution. You can pause this video to draw this. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to discuss uh, the five elements of plot um, that we analyze in reading. Um, these are the same things that are on the plot diagram. So we have exposition rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. So we have five new vocabulary words that we need to uh, jot down in our journals, and we're going to do them in order. If you want to highlight the vocabulary words and then write the definition right next to them, that would be awesome. It'll help you uh, with your annotation skills. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is exposition. Uh, AKA, or also known as the beginning of the story. 
Uh, in the exposition, um, well, let me explain what it is. The word exposition in literature means to expose or show the conflict of the story. Uh, remember that conflict is just another word for problem. So this is the point of the story where, you know, every, like the characters are introduced and you'll also figure out like what the problem in the story is. This is all part of the exposition. Uh, when you identify what the problem of a story is, you have exposed it. Um, you can now label a plot diagram with a short description, like once, like a one sentence of what the conflict of the story is. And that'll be like on the dis exposition portion of it. Uh, when taking down notes, you don't have to take down notes that are exactly as what is on my slide. Just write like a summary or like a shortened version of what you understand that exposition is. So if I were to ask you, what is exposition? I don't want you to tell me everything that's on this slide. I want you to be able to write it in your own words, okay? So for example, you could write down on your journal exposition and then put a little dash and you could say um, the beginning of the story and where I find the, the conflict slash problem. Okay. The next one is rising action. During the story, the conflict will begin to get stressful, exciting, or even complicated. So during this part of the story, um, this is when uh, we realize that the problem is either getting worse or the events in the story are just getting like really exciting. Um, and so this is called our rising action. One thing that we want to make note of is that some students sometimes confuse rising action and climax. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more in the next slide. Um, and we'll discuss more about like the little clip that you watched and what the difference is between rising action and climax. But for right now, rising action is basically when the story begins begins to get more exciting or more complicated. Once again, if you have a highlighter with you, you can highlight your vocabulary word rising action. Or you can just, uh, you know, draw a little square around it kind of to emphasize that that is a vocabulary word. Okay, our next one is climax. The word climax is actually a Greek uh, term for the word uh, meaning ladder. Um, contrary to belief, climax is not always the most exciting part of the story. I know that sometimes we come into seventh grade and we want to say, oh yeah, I know what climax is. Climax is the most exciting part of the story. But actually, it's just the turning point of a story. Um, Climax is the point of a story when the conflict has reached a stopping point, like like this is as worse as it's going to get, or this is as exciting as it's going to get. Um, so sometimes the most exciting part of a story can actually be located in the rising action. But climax is whenever that excitement stops. Like at what point does the problem in the story stop, right? Or at what point does the character in the story be like choose, okay, that's enough, like, uh, you know, this is as far as it's going to get, okay? For example, in the Pixar clip of Mike's new car, the climax is when Mike solves his conflict by telling Sullivan to get out of the car. So once again, you can highlight your vocabulary word climax. And the definition could say something like climax is the point of the story when the conflict stops or the turning point of a story. The next thing is falling action. Falling action is the point in the story when the events begin to calm down and things seem to go back to normal. Whatever conflict there was begins a process of resolution or Whatever problem there was, it seems like a solution is starting to, to form. 
Once again, highlight following action and simplify your definition for it according to your understanding. And last but not least, resolution. This is the last part of our plot diagram and the last element. At this point, the story has found a complete solution to the problem and the ending of the story uh, could be either a good one or a sad one. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad, um, it just has an ending. That's the resolution. The word resolution means to resolve or to find a solution to a problem. Once again, highlight your vocabulary word, resolution. If you don't have a highlighter, you can just draw a box around it. So we're going to rewatch the movie clip, uh, but this time uh, it's going to review the elements of plot. Um, and I want you to pay close attention to the differences between rising action, climax, and falling action.
I miss my old car. You know, the vroom vroom and the clang clang and the bang bang. You uh, yeah. walk? Yes. All right, so um, as you saw, we went through the uh, five elements of plot in the video of Mike's new car. So what you're going to do for your assignment today is you're going to reread the story Grounded. Now, we read the story Grounded last week um, on page six of our textbook. Um, I know that you don't have your textbook right now because, well, you're at home. So once again, um, I did provide a PDF version of it, so you can actually uh, read it. Uh, your parents just have to download it um, or just open up the document from the email. Um, your assignment is to draw a plot diagram in your reading side of your journal, in this case on a separate sheet of paper, um, and you're going to label it according to the story's events. So for example, you're going to draw the plot diagram and label it, right? Exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. So it's gonna look like that, okay? Um, and what you're gonna do is in one sentence, I want you to write down what the exposition or you know, the beginning of the story and what the problem is um, where it says exposition. So on this side, you're going to write one sentence that tells me what the beginning of the story is and what the problem is. Then you're going to uh, write down one sentence for what is the rising action, okay? And then one sentence, what is the climax for the story in, uh, in Grounded? And then what is the falling action in the story Grounded? And then what is the resolution in the story Grounded? How does the story end, okay? All right. So uh, you can actually pause right here if you need it uh, to, you know, to draw your plot diagram on a separate sheet of paper. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward with uh, Writer's Workshop. So today we're going to learn about capitalization, and we're going to use an acronym to learn that. So the essential question for today is, why is capitalization important anyway? Like, why do we even capitalize stuff, right? So this is uh, your notes for your writing side. Once again, use a separate sheet of paper or a notebook. And when you return to class uh, physically, you can just staple or glue those notes to your uh, interactive journal, okay, that you have in class. So before we dive into capitalization, we need to uh, activate prior knowledge um, on the eight parts of speech. Um, if you don't already know your eight parts of speech, you should be writing these things down. So your eight parts of speech. So we have nouns, which is what we're going to learn about today. That's why it's highlighted in green. We have uh, interjections, pronouns, conjunctions, adverbs, adjectives, verbs, and prepositions. You can pause the video right now to copy this down on your notes. You just have to draw this, uh, this uh, diagram right here and then label it, okay? So what is a noun? This is a vocabulary word. A noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. So it's basically a word for a person, place, thing, or idea. You can write that definition down in your notes. There are two common types of nouns. We have common and proper. So to under, understand why we capitalize some things, we have to understand uh, what those two types of nouns are, okay? We have common nouns. Common nouns 
um, are nouns that have a general name like cat or restaurant or pencil. Okay, we don't capitalize those things because they're just general names. They're not specific. Okay. Um, then we have our proper nouns. Our proper nouns are nouns that have a specific name, like Tom or McDonald's. We capitalize all of our proper nouns. Uh, your name, for example, is a proper noun, uh, but a common noun for you would be uh, student. We don't capitalize the word student. But if I use your actual name, which is very specific to identifying a specific student, you, we, that's what we capitalize. We capitalize your name. So, for example, uh, teacher is a common noun, but the proper noun could be like Miss Carrasco. We capitalize Miss Carrasco because it is a name of a specific teacher. School is a common noun. So we don't capitalize the word school, but Wilson and Young is a proper noun. So we capitalize Wilson and Young. Okay. So sometimes we have other things that we capitalize that are not proper nouns. And we want to use this acronym here uh, to help us better remember other things that we need to capitalize that are not proper nouns. Uh, this is called mints. M stands for months, which are actually proper nouns because they're names for specific uh, months of the year. So, for example, February, March, April, May, all of those names we always, always capitalize. I stands for the letter I. Um, the, sorry, the pronoun I. Uh, the word I, like in I went to the store, okay, um, is a pronoun. It is the only pronoun that we capitalize, but we're going to learn about pronouns later on this week um, in another lesson, okay? But for right now, just make sure that you're copying this down in your notes. So you should be writing down like the M equals months, I equals the letter I, N equals names. So we talked about this a little bit uh, a while ago. We always capitalize specific names of people, places, things. So capitalize specific names for restaurants or any type of place, schools, uh, cities, towns, countries. Capitalize names of specific names for people, like students, uh, teachers, doctors, just any specific name. Okay, uh, and then titles. T equals titles. Uh, these are also proper nouns. For example, titles of specific books. Um, for example, uh, Harry Potter. We capitalize Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because it is a specific title of a story. Uh, what about movies? Yes, movies too. For example, Finding Nemo. It is a specific name or title of a movie. So we capitalize Finding Nemo. And then finally, S uh, stands for starts of sentences or the beginning of sentences. This is just a grammatic rule. Um, anytime that you begin a new sentence, we must always capitalize the first letter. So you may pause this video to continue taking those notes. I'm going to move forward. So here is a little uh, anchor chart that could help you better remember uh, mints. Uh, sometimes we can think of, you know, like little peppermints to help us remember what uh, what things to capitalize, just a visual. So remember, M is for months. Here's an example. My birthday is in November. We capitalize the N in November because it is a specific name for a month. 
I stands for the letter I. Here's an example. I can't wait to open the presents I receive. We capitalize I because it is a specific pronoun. N stands for names. Proper nouns or proper names of specific people, places, and things. We kind of went over that already. T stands for titles. I really enjoyed reading Fire Girl. We capitalize F in Fire Girl because it is a, a specific name of a book or a story. And then finally, S stands for the start of sentences. The first letter is always capitalized in every sentence. So right here in the beginning, we capitalize the letter T because it is the first letter at the beginning of a sentence. So for your writer's workshop assignment, you're going to complete the capitalization worksheets to practice your capitalization skills. These worksheets are attached to your email. Um, so just open it up and on a separate sheet of paper, I want you to write down all of the answers. Okay, exit ticket. Uh, I want you to answer your reader's workshop and writer's workshop questions on one page in your journal. So you don't have your journal. So on a separate sheet of paper, I just want you to answer these questions below. You don't have to go back into the video to look for the questions. I have already provided them for you here. Um, how do plot elements help us better analyze and understand a story? And your writer's essential question, why is capitalization important anyway? And that's it. That's the end of today's lesson for Monday. Um, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again next time for Tuesday's lesson. Bye.